Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to show you how you can build a simple RESTful API using Spring Boot. So the idea for this tutorial is to show you how easily you can get started creating your own RESTful APIs using Spring Boot because most of what we need is already in place. We just need to focus on the actual resources that we're going to expose. We will be focusing on a CRUD functionality. So that means we want to create new resources. We want to query all of them, individual resources, and we want to update them. And we might also want to delete them. Let's dive right in. Let's code. All right, um, let's check what we have here. So as usual, I'm using Spring Boot 273. And there are a couple of dependencies I brought in here. First one is um, Starter Web, because usually we have the choice whether we want the reactive or the non-reactive flavor. I'm using the non-reactive flavor, which is um, uh, the Spring Boot Starter Web that I'm using here uh, with a plain old Tomcat underneath. Um, I'm also bringing in the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA because the example that I want to show, I just want to make sure that the resources are also persisted in a database and we just get them back through the controller. And I'm also bringing in um, Jackson Data Format XML, which we will be using for content negotiation. So I'm also, as usual, have the, the H2 database uh, as the runtime dependency. I also created a few files up front. So first of all, let's quickly check um, the properties. So I created the, uh, the connection properties that we need for the H2 database. There's nothing fancy in here. Uh, um, again, because I don't want to focus much on the data layer in this one, uh, I just want to make sure that we can use it. So that means I also have a resource and the resources that we are working with are users. And users just have an email address, which is the primary key, which is a natural ID for them, and also using the name. Um, that's really all there is to it. Of course, I need um, the repository to access users. And I'm also, once the application starts, I'm running a snippet of code that's just creating 10 random users. So it's generating uh, 10 random email addresses that are all unique because I'm using a UUID here. A, they all have the name anonymous. Um, it doesn't really matter here, but just to make sure that we have a couple of users in the database. So once we start up the application, there will be 10 users that we can work with. All right, so let's see how we would structure an API here. So the first thing that we need is a controller and we call that user controller because it manages users. Now we need a stereotype. Uh, we can go with controller. So I'm using the rest controller uh, instead because that makes sure that all the functions that we write um, will uh, be annotated with the re at response body annotation. So let's get started by exposing all of the users that we have. First of all, we of course need the repository. Let's call it users user repository. Um, that's the user repository, there we go. Okay, so what we need to do is, I just call this all, and I want to expose a list of users. So I can really just return users find all to list. So that is searching all of the users, there are just 10. Uh, it's converting it to a list and we're just exposing that as is directly. So where, where would we find this, right? That, that's, that's one of the questions because usually you won't have a path that you can use and we don't have a path here yet and we also don't have a mapping. So uh, let's fix that right now. So there's one annotation which is called get mapping um, because this is the request that we're um, looking into are, as I said, get, post, put, and delete. And we start with get to fetch all the users that are available. So I'm just um, putting the get mapping here. I want to have this under the path slash users. So the, this path manages the user's resources. Um, I could now annotate this here, but then I would have to copy the same path for all the functions that we're gonna write. So what I'm gonna do instead is I put the request mapping up on the controller. So that means all of the functions will inherit that mapping. So. I'm using mapping and I'm using users. So that controller responds to slash users. So the get mapping is really just get users, right? So with that in place, let's actually uh, let's actually see if that already works. So if we are starting the application right now, then we should see that it starts successfully. Let's just check if there are any warnings. No, that looks good. Now um, we can go to the terminal and using HTTP. So doing HTTP, HTTP, localhost, 8080 slash users. And what we will see is um, the list of users. 
So we can see that this is um, uh, encoded using JSON representation. Uh, that's the default that's just there, and which is, uh, I think, a, a, a safe choice. So, however, there are applications that rather prefer using um, XML. So this is why I dragged in the XML dependency, because what we can do now is using um, content negotiation. So we could just perform the same request towards users and could use a header, which is accept application XML, like this. And what we will see is that we get the same results, but this time it's um, structured using XML. So just per, by providing um, the header, um, the accept header and Spring takes care of all of that. And we can, of course, customize the representation if we want to, but that's for another day. So uh, just for now, we can see we get all the users that we want. So how would we now find an individual user? Let's look at that next. So we're going back to the controller and now we want to have a gap mapping for an individual user. And as I said, the users are identified by the email addresses. So it makes sense um, to just use something um, like this email. So I have a um, path variable email, which is just a placeholder here. And now I can just call it, let's call it lookup, lookup. Um, and what I wanna do is use a path variable, email string, and that should find us a user. So we will just use that. Spring is taking care to just parse the email address out of the path and then just um, passing it in here as a, as a parameter. So what we can do now is use users find by ID and the ID is the email address here. So um, we can find this right now, but this can be null, right? So let's just do something else before we take care of that. I want to introduce um, an exception because we may not find a user if it doesn't exist. So what we're gonna do is um, we're using class user not found exception. Uh, we pass the email because that's how we identify the user. And then we go to runtime exception um, user for email not found. So that's a runtime exception, but now here comes the nice part about it we can just map the exception um, to an HTTP status code. So what would that be, right? So we wanna look up a user by email address, but we don't find it. So what could we return? HTTP 404 not found, which is just what we're gonna do here. So I can use the response status annotation and can use HTTP status and there are the constants. So we're using not found. So that means when I propagate that exception to the web layer, Spring will just return an HTTP 404 if the user wasn't found. So we can now just return the user if it exists. Um, if it doesn't exist, we just do or of, because that's an option, uh, that's not null, it's an option uh, that, that we get returned by the repository. So I can just say or else throw, um, and we're gonna use the user not found exception and pass in the email. Or mail. No, email. So that's really all there is it. And now we can see that this is being cascaded, right? So we have slash users and then we have slash email. So let's quickly try this out, shall we? Um, let's see where the terminal is, there we go. We just restart the application. And now since the, the email addresses are being generated randomly, uh, I first have to um, query them so we can just check the, the details. So I'm fetching all the users and I can see, okay, there's one user that should exist. Um, so we can just copy the email address and now I can just perform another get request users slash and the email address, which is this one. And we can see it returns one result, which is the user, right? We can see that's HTTP 200, it's okay. And we get the, get the result. Now let's also try the exception that we just created. So users John Doe at example.org. Whoosh. And we see error not found status 404 and we can see that it's an HTTP 404, which is just what we had expected, right? So this is how we can read objects. Now we have to see how we can create, update and delete them. So let's continue with creating new users. Um, we go to the user controller. So, and there we go. So as you can probably tell by now, what we're gonna do is post mapping uh, we post it directly to the user, so we don't need to specify um, a different part, path. Um, we do create, um, 
And yeah, now comes the, the, the funny thing. I want to just directly have a user here. So um, how can we tell Spring to map that as a user? So we can just do request buddy. There we go, import. So that's automatically created from the, from the payload that we sent to the endpoint in just a second. So that gives us the user already. Yeah, since we, since we have the user, we can just do users save that user and we will return it. So we create a new user and return it. So let's do this quickly and see if that works. Um, we have to probably restart the application. Let's do this. Application is restarting and we're going back to the terminal. So now what I want to do is I create a new user. How do I do this? Um, I just use post HTTP local host 8080 users. And the user really just has the email and the name. Uh, I just pass email at alex at alex .com. A name is Alex. So let me just do that. And that was it, right? So we can see the post um, request succeeds and I'm getting the user back that has been created in a database, which is alex at alexgoodyear.com and the name is Alex. So however, there's one thing that I don't like about this, which is that it returns an HTTP 200, which says success. What I would rather use is the HTTP 201, which means created because we have created a resource. So let's fix this by adjusting the response status here. And that's the same annotation I've been using down here for the exception. We can just override the default behavior and can just return status created. So um, if I now just stop and rerun the application, just give it a second, go to the terminal. And now we just create that user again. What we saw is what we what we see is that it has been created, and it's an HTTP 201, which means created, which is just what I want, uh, which has the right semantics. So we now have ways of reading users. We can create them. Now let's also update and delete them. Now let's add the the functions for that right away before we test that. So let's see how we can update an existing user. So this is a put mapping because we need put uh, HTTP put to perform the request. So let's do, as we've done before, we need the email address, which is a path variable. And then we need a request body. I'll just call it request, which is a user. And we also want to return a user once we have updated it. So first of all, we check if the user exists for that email, right? So we're doing users find by ID email um, like this, or else throw as we've done um, user not found. That's also the same that we've done before. So we do it in here. So this will give us the user. So at this point, we know that we have a user that does exist. Um, and now we can just use return users save. And then we have user apply. And we're not changing the ID because we, we don't want to allow changing the email address. Um, but we will just use, uh, we, we will only allow changing the name. And the name is the request name. So let's do it like this. So we change that for the existing user and we invoke safe on the repository. And there's one thing that I'm missing here. Um, we of course need to put in the email as a path variable. So what we're going to do is we just find the user or we try to find it. If it is not there, we just throw the exception before, like before, which is the HTTP 404. But if it exists, we just save it with the updated name. And let's also quickly finish off the final thing, which is the delete mapping, which also requires um, the email address. So we know what to delete. And what we're going to do here is use the path variable again for the email string. So that does not return a user because that user is going to be deleted. And now what we're going to do is I show you the, uh, the third way of returning an HTTP status. So we've seen Usually it's a 200 if something is found, that is what Spring is doing already. We can override that by um, returning a specific response status, or we can just build the response ourselves, which is what we're gonna do. And this is something that looks like this. It's a response entity, HTTP status, because here's what we do. Um, we want to delete an existing user. So first of all, we have to check again if it exists. So we do users um, exists by ID, we do a check. So only if the user exists, what we're going to do is delete by ID 
email. And that's it. If the user doesn't exist, we don't throw a 404 in this case because our API shouldn't be too chatty about whether a resource exists or not. So we just silently delete, otherwise um, there's not much else that we do. We could return a 200 here, but what we can also return is um, a custom code or a different code, which is building a response entity, a response entity, and then using, using this one directly, using the HTTP status and uh, no content so we can do this so we, we we are not too explicit about whether the operation has succeeded or whether a user by that email already exists or not we just we just don't return any content in this so these are the two functions that we have added put mapping which is using the put method to just update an existing user and delete mapping to just delete an existing user so let's quickly run the application again and check out if these endpoints work as expected. So we go into the terminal, just cleaning things up here. Uh, again, we need to check all the users so we can update any any specific instance. So we're using this one. So now it's really just HTTP and now we're using put localhost 8080, that email address, and we're changing the name to John. So that returns a not found. Um, yeah, because I made a mistake because it's not just the email address, but of course we need to specify the users here because that's the control endpoint. So we're trying again, and now we can see that it has worked. We get the HTTP 200 back again, and John is the new name for that email address. So now let's quickly change just one thing. Uh, we just replace put with delete in that example and just perform the same request again. So now I should have deleted John. We see it's uh, no content. Now, when I try to um, access John again, just using get, so I can remove put here and it's get by default, we can see it's 404 again. So that means the user is not found because we have deleted it successfully. So that wraps it up for today. That has shown you how you can create a simple RESTful API using get, post, put, and delete. I hope that was useful. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you on the next one.